Hey guys, if you're looking for some great smaller size Class C RVs with no slide outs so you have easy maintenance and no worries at all, stick around. We found some great floor plans that you're going to want to check out. Hey guys, Mike from RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to the channel. And if this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I create all kinds of content around RVing and we invite you to sign up for our amazing newsletter that goes out to over 100,000 people a week. And when you sign up for the newsletter, you'll also get a free subscription to RV Today magazine. So you will be the most informed RVer on the road. We'll put a link right up here on my left, and there'll be another down in the show notes if you'd like to sign up today. In the meantime, though, let's get started on our review of Class C RVs with no slides. This Class C RV is the Thor Geneva model number 22VT. It has a gross vehicle weight rating of 12,300 pounds, a gross combined weight rating of 16,000 pounds, a hitch weight of 8,000 pounds. It measures in at 24 feet, 7 inches long, and it can sleep up to four people. When you first walk in this RV on the right-hand side, you have the driver's cab and over cab. Then we roll around into the dinette and kitchen area, and in the back of this RV is where the bed and bathroom are located. When we walk into this RV, our first impression is that it brings back good memories because this is a very similar floor plan to our Class C RV that we have as well. But everything's in here that you need. You have your dinette area, your bed and bathroom area. It's a very small and efficient layout in here. But on my right hand side is where the driver's cab is located. Now this particular model comes in either uh, with either a Ford chassis or a Chevy chassis. They build it on both. It's the same size either way. Down below here, you can see we're in the Chevy uh, chassis model. And the bucket seats are very, very comfortable. There is a dinette behind the driver's seat, but you can still back the seat up far enough to get enough leg room to have a comfortable drive. And other than that, it's a pretty clean and basic finish up front. Now over top, in the over cab area, this is a really big spacious area where a couple kids could climb on up here and have fun. Uh, sleeping in the bunk bed or the over cab bed overnight. You've got a nice big TV up here that's on a swing arm. And so you can either see the TV from the dinette or of course you'll be able to see it if you're laying in bed sleeping at night. Now let's check out the size of this bed. Now it's gonna be super wide because it's as wide as the RV. I'm gonna guess it's gonna be around 96 inches because that's what ours is. And yep, sure enough, it is 96 inches wide. And then it is about 52 inches wide or deep. So you can get two people up here, two adults up here, a couple of kids up here, no problem. Now towards the very front of the overcab bunk, there is a little space up there created by that, this little half wall. And then over top of that, there's some storage space up there. So the kids can Throw some clothes up there, uh, throw their games or toys up there, no problem. Another really nice feature is that there is a window on the one side of this bunk, and then there are also a couple of USB ports here, and even a little pouch that you could slide your phone into, or a little game if, if that's what the kids are into. Now, there's also a nice little vent cover up here. It doesn't have a fan on it, but you can still open it up and get some ventilation in here if needed. So the dinette in here is a pretty good sized dinette. I mean, four people can sit here very, very comfortably. And I have to say these cushions that are in here for the seating are extremely comfortable. These are really nice. I wish we had them in our rig. I might take them. But anyway, that's a different story. Uh, the tabletop has a couple of built-in cup holders on the one end, which are vital. Uh, I feel like if we don't use the cup holders in our rig, I'm not going to drink over 100% of the time. And then you also have a little mobile charger here, so you can set your phone on there and charge it up. Now, this dinette table will drop down, and this becomes another sleeping area if you do that. And let's see what kind of measurement we have here. And we have about 70 inches, and it's about 41 inches wide, so an average size adult or maybe a couple of small kiddos would be able to sleep there pretty easily. Now, underneath your dinette here, there is a receptacle plug. So if you're working or doing some trip planning at your dinette table or just checking out things to do in the local area, you can plug in your computer underneath if you need to charge it. Now, there's also 
a nice size window up here above the dinette, a couple of lights here, and there's a couple of speakers up here too, so you can turn on your radio and listen to some music in here. And then of course, above the dinette, we have these three big cabinet doors. Now this is all one big storage compartment from side to side with three doors on it. I know when Susan and I um, are in our Class C, it's a similar setup, and we use clear plastic totes to store everything. That way we can see what's inside of each tote, and it keeps things from sliding all over the place while we're traveling down the road. Now, underneath of, underneath of these dinette booths, there is storage on this one side here, and you can pull this drawer out. It's actually pretty wide, or pretty long, so you can get a decent amount of storage in there. The other dinette bench, has some uh, technical gear under it so you can't really access that for storage. For you folks that have kiddos, there is a uh, tether here for a car seat. So if you need uh, to set that up, that is available as well. Now, right across from the dinette, we have the kitchen area. And this is what's called an inline kitchen. All that means is that all your appliances are in a line. It's a very efficient setup. Uh, you see this mostly in smaller Class C's or even travel trailers where they're trying to get the most out of the space. Now up top here, you have a very large storage cabinet here, and this has an adjustable shelf in it. Thor seems to be one of the only ones that's putting adjustable shelves in their cabinetry, and I think it's a great idea. You can move the shelf according to your needs, and it just helps everything to fit better that way. And then there's another cabinet over top of the microwave for more storage there. Then of course you've got your microwave oven and it's a decent size, it's not huge, but it's a decent size for this camper. Of course we have our range hood and fan above or below that and then a three burner stove comes with it also. Now next to the stove is where the kitchen sink is located. And this is a little drain cover that comes over top of the sink. And then of course you have a small sink in here. It's not really very big, I think it would be a little bit tough washing your dishes and stuff, but I think you can get it done. Then they have a nice overhead gooseneck faucet with an integral sprayer. And then below that, we've got a bank of drawers here for your kitchen utensils. Now you might be wondering like, ah, this really isn't enough countertop space. What am I gonna do? So there is an extend a top to the left here and then you can plug in any appliances. So let's say you wanna set your coffee pot on here or toaster, you can plug in right next to it and you're good to go. Down below the range, we do have a real oven here. It's not very deep or tall, but you can certainly throw a pizza in there or some cookies or whatever you wanna bake up. And then below that, you have a nice sized pots and pans drawer. Now, just beyond the microwave and the cooktop is where the refrigerator is located. And this is a very good size refrigerator for this RV. You have all this room for all your cold storage needs, a big freezer up top. And this is a 12 volt refrigerator, which is primarily what we're seeing in every RV these days. 12 volt fridge just means it runs on your battery. And so whether you're driving down the road or you're at a campsite, your battery is going to power your refrigerator. When you plug into shore power at your campsite, that recharges the battery and the battery keeps your fridge running all day and all night long. Now down below the fridge, there's also another storage area under here and they even have a little trash can in here so you can have your trash can storage. Now just beyond the dinette and across from the refrigerator, we have this big wardrobe cabinet here. This has mirror doors in it and a drawer down below for some additional storage. But inside of this cabinet, it's really large and roomy. It has a bar across the top so you can hang your garments there. And then there's still room below that for even more storage. In our Class C RV, Susan got one of those shoe organizer things that's like this wide and this deep and this tall. We actually put it in our wardrobe closet and then we can store things in that as well and still have room left over for our hanging garments. Now the bed back here looks to be about a full size bed, but let's check it out. See if I can get my tape measure between these pillows. So this is 80 inches long and it's about 56 inches wide. So this would be considered a residential full size bed. We have the same size in our RV and we both sleep comfortably in there. Now we actually have a Tocta mattress in our RV. We chose Tocta because 
I think they do a great job with customizing mattresses for folks that have RVs. And their mattresses are super comfortable. We loved ours since we had it. I think we've had it, what, three years now, and it's been fantastic. Our kids use our RV to go camping too, our Class C anyway, and they think it's great too. Now you might notice in this RV that it does have a cut corner mattress on it. And that's another reason we went with Takta. They sell cut corner mattresses for RVs and they have a great system right online where you, they show you which measurements you need so they can make the mattress fit just right. We'll stick a link in the notes down below if you're interested in checking them out. And if you use our discount code, you save like 7%. Now next to the, well, let me finish up the bed area. Uh, above the bed, you'll also notice that they have these large storage cabinets up here. And um, it's plenty of room to store all of your clothes. It's pretty much open all the way around this big L-shaped area. Plenty of lights back here, so it's nice and bright. And then there's a, also a vent lid here. There's not a fan in it, but you can at least open it and get some ventilation. There's also a window here that opens and a large window on the back. So you get plenty of light in here during the day, and then you'll need to close your shades at night for your privacy. Now there also is, a on the right-hand side over here, a receptacle and USB ports and a little pocket to slide your phone or tablet into. So that's nice and convenient if you need to charge your electronic devices overnight. Now here I am in the bathroom and I'm standing in the shower like I always do and there is a skylight over my head here. So let's get a measurement in here and see what our ceiling heights are. First of all, the height in the shower area up into the skylight. Oh, it's pretty roomy. You can get, uh, you can be six feet ten and just barely hit your head on the skylight and the height throughout the entire RV is six feet seven inches of ceiling height. So for your taller folks, this one might work out well because you have a full length 80 inch bed and your ceiling heights are at least seven, six feet, seven inches or taller. Now the shower in here is a decent size. It's not huge, but the RV is not huge. So you only have so much room to work with, but they did a great job with the shower surround in here. It just looks nice. Even though it's a faux marble pattern, it looks very nice in here. And then you have your shower sprayer. Now one really cool feature in this RV this is a big, big pet peeve of ours, is they have a new feature called the shower miser. Now we wrote an article about this a while back. I'll stick a link in the show notes down below if you'd like to learn more about this product. But the basics of it are that you turn on the shower miser valve, it recirculates water in your plumbing system until the water's hot. Once the water's hot, this changes color and then you know it's okay to go ahead and turn on your shower and you get warm water immediately. In our RV, we don't have this feature and we waste a lot of water just waiting for the shower water to get hot. And we have an on-demand water heater and there's a big misconception about on-demand water heaters. They will provide endless hot water once they're hot, but it takes a little while for the hot water to come out. So when we're boondocking, the last thing we wanna do is pour gallons of water into our gray tank while we're waiting for the shower to warm up or the kitchen sink or whatever it is. But this works only in the shower. It's a great product and uh, if you're interested in it, uh, this particular model comes with it built in. You can also add them after market. It's a little bit more complicated of an of a installation, but you can do it. And like I said, I'll stick a, stick a link in the uh, notes down below if you wanna check out more about that. Now in the back of the shower, they have three shelves built in here for your soap and shampoo bottles. And they did go with a curtain in here. And if you, if you guys have seen our videos before, you know I'm not a big fan of the curtain. Uh, I would much rather see a retractable shower door in here. They're fantastic because they take up so little space. It's this much space at the end when the door is retracted and then you pull it across when you take a shower. It's a great product. You can always install one of those on your own. So I wouldn't you know, let it keep you from buying an RV that you like. And then you can always install it later. You can buy them online. They make them custom sizes for you. And it's just a fantastic product. Now, just outside of the shower, you have your medicine cabinet here. So you've got plenty of room for storing all your personal items. Below that, you have a vanity top, good size vanity sink. And then there's some, van uh, some cabinet space down below. There's also a receptacle on the side of the vanity. So if you need to plug in a blow dryer, curling iron, what have you, you can certainly do that. And then finally, once I'm sitting here on the commode, not really 
not really a big fan of this location for the toilet paper holder. I think it would be better on the wall across, or you could even mount it inside the cabinet door so it's out of the way all the time. But right here seems a bit odd to me. Uh, sitting on the commode though with the door closed, there is plenty of room in here. I'm not gonna pass the elbow test really, but the bathroom's big enough and it's set up in a way that you'll be comfortable while you're using the bathroom. So here we are outside and in the back of this Class C, there's a very large storage compartment back here. Even has a couple of lights under here so you can see what's going on in there, but there is plenty of room in here to store all of your camping gear. This Class C RV is the Gulfstream BT Cruiser, model number 5210. It has a gross vehicle weight rating of 12,500 pounds. It measures in at just 22 feet, six inches long. It can sleep up to two people and the hitch weight is 7,500 pounds. When you first walk into this Class C RV on the left-hand side, you have a closet with some drawers underneath. Then you have the bathroom, which rolls around into the kitchen and living area. And in the front, we have the driver's cab. So our first impression of this Class C RV is that it's very different from any other Class Cs that we've seen before. First of all, there's no bed in here. Second of all, there's no dinette in here. So it's just a very, very different feel. And this Class C is really much shorter than a lot of other Class Cs that we've seen too. It's only 22 and a half feet, where most of the smaller ones we see are right around 25 feet. So they've done a good job of taking a lot of features and jamming them into a small amount of space, which, hey, the big advantage is a 22 and a half foot Class C goes a lot more places it's much easier to drive, so you have all those nice advantages and benefits of a smaller Class C. Now, this Class C is built on a Ford chassis. It's built on the E350 chassis, to be exact. Very nice, comfortable finish and fit up here in the driving area. One thing to note is that the driver's seat can move back to its full position, so if you're a bigger person and you need more room, leg room up here to be able to drive, you're going to have that in this Class C RV. Now, another unique feature here that um, Gulfstream does is sometimes they do not leave the over cab open. They'll build it in with this cabinetry and it gives you some storage up here that you can use. And they put the TV in the center up here as well. So it's just another way of doing the over cab and making it look a little more finished off. Now, behind that, we have these two really nice and big luxurious couches. Now, when I look at this camper, I really think it's kind of just meant for two people, right? So to have two gigantic couches is a little, a little strange to me, I guess I'll say, because you don't need them if it's just two people in here, but these couches have three purposes. First of all, they are a place for you to just hang out and relax and take it easy. I was telling Susan earlier, hey, if we were both in here together, I could lay on my couch, she could lay on hers, and then we could watch TV together. So that's certainly one way that you could use this area. The second way is that this is your dinette area too. And I'm not going to set this all up, but I did grab the table. And the table would set up right here there's a couple of poles that go into the holes on the floor and your table just mounts on there and you would have your dinette table here as well so susan and i could sit either next to each other or you know crisscross from each other and enjoy a nice meal on here while we're watching tv as well and then the third function is that these couches do also become your beds and i'll show you how that works real quick First thing you do is these are jackknife sofas. So all you do is lift up on the front and then they just pull right on down. And on this side, you do the same thing, except I have to get out of here. And now you've got two beds that are here. Now, I guess you could maybe sleep two adults on one side and maybe two kids on the other, but I think everybody would be pretty cramped if you did that. So really the way it ends up is one person has a nice big bed and so does the other person. That's kind of how I see it. Now these couches measure in at about 74 inches and then they are about 43 inches wide, but that's a little bit deceiving because you look at the end of the couch, it sort of goes down on both sides. And so I don't really think you're going to be sleeping out here. Or you're going to end up in the middle. You're really going to be spending all your time in the center of the couch to make yourself comfy when you go to bed at night.
A couple of other nice features to note about the living bedroom dinette area, if you will, are that underneath this couch, there is a storage door here and you do have some storage underneath of the couch. And then above both of the couches, you have cabinetry there for more storage as well. Now, underneath of the cabinetry up top, there are a couple of lights and these lights are pretty cool. They have like a metal trim ring around them. So when you touch the metal ring, it makes the light go on and off. I keep missing. There we go. So that's kind of cool. There's also a couple of USB ports up top and an electrical receptacle as well. So one other thing to point out, and I'm a huge fan of big windows and RVs are the big windows in this RV. There's one on each side. They're really a good size window. So they do let in a lot of natural light. And if you open these window screens, you can certainly get a nice cross breeze through here. Now, another thing that you can do to even create more space in your RV, when we have a Class C RV as well. And so you, there's a privacy curtain that comes that you can install right here. So at nighttime, when you're in here getting dressed or undressed or whatever, people can't look in through your front windshield. We bought a windshield cover that covers the outside windshield and the two side windows. And it has screens built into it so you can roll down the side windows and bugs don't get in. And so those window covers are fantastic. Uh, I highly recommend it. We use ours on our Class C for years and it's lasted. So I'll put a link in the notes down below and you can find the same cover to fit your exact RV model. And I'm sure you will like it as well. So here we are back behind the sofa area and we're in the kitchen area here. And this is a nice compact kitchen. I think it works really well. Up top here, you have a nice size cabinet for all your storage needs. Then you have a microwave oven here. Down below that, you've got a two burner propane stove. And then of course you have your kitchen sink. And this sink is a nice, big, deep, round sink. So you can get all your pots and pans in there. Nice gooseneck faucet with an integral sprayer makes a very good kitchen setup. Now, if you wanted to set up a toaster oven or a coffee pot, you, you'd have to put it up here somewhere. You do have a receptacle here that you can plug things into, but they really don't have a lot of countertop space in here. I kind of wish they had taken the stovetop and just moved it over a little closer to this wall, and that would have given us a little more countertop space between the sink and the cooktop. Now, down below that, you have a nice deep drawer here for your pots and pans storage. Even a second one down here with a little latch that you can keep a toad under there with more kitchen utensils or pots and pans. And then you have more storage underneath of your kitchen sink. Now, just across from the kitchen sink and stovetop is where the refrigerator is located. And this has a nice cover on it. It matches all the cabinetry in here. And then you've got a skinny fridge in here is what we call them. It's kind of like a half fridge, but there's plenty of room in there actually. And then up top here, it does have a separate freezer compartment. It's not that big, but you can certainly keep your ice in there. And I don't think you're really going to squeeze a frozen pizza in there or anything, but it'll keep you going for a long weekend for sure. Now, like I mentioned right in the beginning of the video, when you first come in the entry door, there is a cabinet here and you can use this for a variety of storage purposes, right? You can just throw anything in here, boxes, totes, whatever. But up top, there is a bar. So if you want to make this your coat closet slash wardrobe closet, you know, that's probably what it's best suited for. Uh, you can hang up your shirts and jackets and still have room below to stow things away. And then it's got a couple of drawers underneath so you can store some things there too. So here we are in the bathroom in the very back of the rig and it's a good size bathroom. I mean, they did a nice job laying this out. Now I'm standing in the shower like I always do. And let's see how much headroom that we have in here up into the skylight. And let's see. And we have about six feet, five inches into the skylight. The overall ceiling height in this rig, it measures in at about also six feet, five inches. So for you folks that are taller than that, this class C may not make it for you. Everybody else that I think it'll work just fine. Now the uh, shower itself, you know, it's a little bit tight, but not too bad. I mean, it's certainly comfortable enough to take a shower in here. It does have three shelves in the one corner for all your soap and shampoo. And then they have a retractable shower door here, which is tremendous. I think this is a great space saver. Plus it keeps all the water inside the shower. So uh, just a great feature. Now outside of the shower, that's where you'll find your medicine cabinet. 
Below that, you have your vanity top with a receptacle there so you can plug in any appliances that you need and then more storage below that. And finally, when I'm sitting on the commode and the door is closed, it feels like the door is right in front of my face, but I've got plenty of room in here. Otherwise, I can certainly pass the elbow test for sure. So here we are outside this class CRV, and this is really the only storage compartment on the outside. It's not a bad size. I mean, you can get a grill in there and a couple of other accessories, but there's not a whole lot of room on the inside of this storage bay. So you'll probably end up having to store some things inside your RV while you're cruising down the road, and then you bring them outside and get your campsite all set up. This class C RV is the Jayco Granite Ridge model number 22T. It has a gross vehicle weight rating of 11,000 pounds, a gross combined weight rating of 15,000 pounds. The manufacturer does not list the hitch weight. It measures in at 22 feet, 11 inches long, and it can sleep up to two people. When you first walk into this RV, on the right-hand side is the driver's cab area. Next, we wrap on around to the dinette and kitchen area. Then there's a mid-bath, and finally, the bedroom is all the way in the back. Now, my first impression uh, walking into this RV is that it's very compact and it's small, so it's going to be easy to drive and go anywhere you want to go. In fact, this particular model has all-wheel drive. It sits on a Ford Transit 350 HD chassis, so it'll get you where you want to go, and that all-wheel drive is a really nice feature to have because these, these types of RVs are made to go where you want to go and get off the beaten trail a little bit. Now up top here we've got some storage on each side of the over cab area and then you've got a nice big TV up here as well. So if you're sitting here relaxing in your dinette area you can watch TV and totally chill out. The driver's cab area is very well appointed. I like the way everything looks. It's got a nice big touch screen in the middle so you can use your GPS, use your radio and all your controls for your RV. It's a really nice setup. Over top here, you've also got some cubbies where you can throw maps and pens and all that kind of stuff up top for your travels. So here I am sitting at the dinette in here. And honestly, if Susan and I were in here, we would be bumping knees under this table like crazy. Now, ordinarily, I would really enjoy that. But around the 50th time, I think I'd get pretty sick of it. How about you, honey? Yes. Yes, for sure. But, you know, we could squeeze in here and make it work for a small RV that you can go anywhere with. I mean, that's that's one of the things you have to put up with is a little bit smaller dinette area. Now, above the dinette, you have this nice window that will open. They have the really nice shades in here where you can pull your screen up or you can pull your shade down. I mean, these are fantastic window options that work really, really well. And then above that, you have a couple of lights and then you have some nice storage inside of these compartments overhead. Now, one other thing that we really look for somewhere near our dinette is, is there a electrical outlet and USB ports? And in this case, they have both and they're located right under the dinette by my left leg. Uh, so if you're sitting here at your table and you're working or, you know, maybe doing some trip planning, you can plug in your computer if you need to and you are good to go. Now the kitchen area in here is very nice and compact as well. It's an inline kitchen, which just means that everything, all the kitchen appliances are just in a line. Now up top here, we'll start here. You've got a nice cabinet here that flips up so you can get into all this storage space here. And right next to that, you've got a convection microwave oven overhead. And the cabinets are really high up off the countertop in here too, which, which is nice because it makes this area feel bigger, which is a good thing. Now your countertop area in here is pretty big and here's a receptacle in the corner. So you could plug in a, you know, a toaster or a coffee pot or whatever you need in the morning. Now there is no cooktop in here, but it does come with an induction cooktop. Now we're at an RV show, so they have it hidden away somewhere or they didn't put it in the RV for the show because you can literally grab it and walk away with it. And they do plug in. The cool thing about those induction cooktops is you can use it inside or you can take it outside and plug it in out there and use your counter, your cooktop out there as well. So it's a little bit versatile in where you can use it. But they do have this really nice round single bowl deep sink in here. It's got a big gooseneck faucet and a sprayer that you can use as well. And then they just have this really nice wooden, uh, you know, sink cover. I suppose you could use this as a cutting board. Um, and that just gives you extra countertop space when you're not using your sink as well. Now down below here, we have plenty of storage underneath the kitchen sink. 
And then there are also three drawers off to the side where you can store all of your kitchen utensils. Right across from the kitchen is another pantry cabinet. So you have lots of storage down there too. Now, just beyond the, the kitchen and microwave and all that stuff is where the refrigerator is located. Now, this is the skinniest refrigerator I've ever seen in an RV before, but hey, you're in an RV that's less than 23 feet long. So things are gonna be a little more compact in here. That's just how it is. Down below here, you have plenty of room for all your cold storage. And then there's a separate freezer area up top. So here I am all the way in the back of this RV. And as you can see, it's a couple steps up to get into the bed area. And in just a few minutes, we're gonna show you why it's designed this way. And I bet you're gonna think it's really, really cool, because I sure do. Now back here in the bedroom, you can set this up as twin beds, which is how it's set up right now. And if you were to do that, let's see how, how big these beds would be. Let's see here. All right, we got 76 inches by, and we'll call it 29 inches, 30 inches on each side. So if you wanted to leave it in the twin bed setup, then this is what you would have. And then you could also just convert this into one big bed back here because this cushion has a hard bottom on it and it just fits in the middle here. And there you go. I didn't really do that right. I don't, there we go. Now it's popping in. So if we did that, you would end up with a huge bed in here. And the width of this, it's probably, it's about 81, 82 inches in here. So, you know, that's a pretty good size bed. And you guys know I'm 5'11". So, you know, here's what it would look like if I was sleeping in here. Now, if I got up really fast, bam, I might hit my head. So you got to watch out for stuff like that. But uh, over top here, we've got all these cabinets here. And in this particular model, um, they are showing the optional Starlink that come, can come with it, but it is an option that you would have to pay for as an upgrade. But since this is an, you know, kind of meant to be like an off-road vehicle to go to the middle of nowhere and hang out, you're gonna need Starlink for internet probably. And so they already have the router mounted back here. And then uh, the dish that you would use, um, is a separate dish that connects to a long cord and you can set the dish up on the ground or you can get a pole mount on your ladder and set it up that way. There's a few different ways to do it, but you know, what a great setup for an off-road vehicle. Now, in addition to that, there are receptacles and USB ports under here that you can access and then you can plug in your phone at night or whatever and you pop it up in this little handy shelf to charge overnight for you. Another really great feature in this bedroom is the two really large windows on each side. And there's another window on the back. So you can open all these babies up. They have these really nice screens and then you can open them, lower them. You can put your shades down, but man, you get a really nice cross breeze through here and we are enjoying it because it is hot outside today. Let me tell you what. Now the TV location back here is right on this wall. You can see you've got a receptacle and cable outlet right here. You can hang your TV here, lay in bed at night and drift right off to sleep. Down below these beds, there's also more storage. There's a couple of, there's one cabinet door, but there's also four drawers back here that open. They're nice and big and deep for all your storage needs. So let's head on into the bathroom and check that out. But before we do, I just wanted to show you this, your door is on a little magnet catch. So when it's in that position the magnet catches it and it creates a little separation between the bedroom and the rest of the rv now now that i'm inside the shower when you want to take a shower you don't just close the door you actually use the retractable shower door and there you go stand in here and take a shower and keep the water from going out there uh, i love the retractable shower doors they're they're out of the way they're easy to use they're just terrific now once you're in the shower you know it's a it's what's called a wet bath now for those of you that don't know what a wet bath is, a wet bath just means that the shower floor with a drain in it is the floor for the whole entire bathroom. Your toilet sits in the shower with you. And so when you take a shower, everything in here gets wet. Therefore, it's called a wet bath. A dry bath is like your bathroom at home where your shower is your shower and then your toilet's outside of the shower and your vanity's outside of the shower. In this case, everything's inside the shower, so it's called a wet bath. Now, a wet bath, some people don't like them because everything gets wet. You got to dry everything off after you take a shower. But 
some folks really think they're great because the toilet's in here. And so if you need to sit down while you're taking a shower for some reason, maybe you got a bad knee or something like that, you know, you can sit down on the toilet, take a shower, and there you go. You got a seat inside here for you. Now this one, this wet bath is actually larger than most of them that we see. There's plenty of room in here. I can move around very comfortably. I'd be able to take a shower in here, no problem. We have some corner shelves here for your soap and your shampoo. There's even a little window in here to get some extra light. You hardly ever see that these days. So you also have a vent fan up top. You could open this window for some ventilation and really lower the humidity that could build up in your RV when you take a shower. Now, there is a vanity sink in here, but it's a very unusual vanity sink. You have to kind of lower it down. It's like an airplane kind of vanity, and then you can pull your faucet out and wash your hands or whatever. And then this does fill with water, but when you close, when you close the sink, the water pours out and drains on out that way. So it's a really cool little setup. And finally, when you're sitting on the commode in here, which by the way is a cassette toilet, it's not your standard type toilet that you find in many other Class C RVs, uh, you have a decent amount of elbow room. I mean, I'm not going to pass the elbow test, but you've got some decent room in here. So. Let's head on outside now and take a look at why the back bed is so high. I know you're gonna love this feature. So here we are outside the RV and this storage area is why the bed is raised so high inside because look at this massive storage area. They got a bicycle in here. They have this giant cooler in here. You can store tons and tons of stuff in here. Now some friends of ours, very good friends of ours that we love dearly, own another RV, very, very similar to this model, but it's not this model. I can't really say what it is, but it has this kind of storage compartment in the back. And they pack this thing up with bins of stuff that they need. And their big problem is if, they can't, if it's not here on the outside and accessible from this side or the other side, they have to pretty much unpack the whole back of this thing to be able to get to the stuff that's in the middle. Well, Jayco came up with a great solution to that problem and it's this door right here on the back of the RV. And this creates total access to this entire back compartment because you have three access points and it's really, really just a great, great setup. There's also a receptacle in here. So if you need to plug things in from in here to outside your RV, you can do that. And uh, there's a couple lights in here, as you can see. There's also a cargo net up above for additional storage. I just love this storage space. It's very, very unique and very, very user friendly. Hey guys, let us know which one of these Class C RVs you like the most and why in the comments down below. We would love to hear from you. And if you want to check out some more Class C RVs with no slide outs, just click the box down below. And Susan and I will see you in the next video.